Hey everyone, this is my latest project. This is an individual cookie maker. So this thing has a rotating platform here and there's going to be stations along the platform that contain the ingredients to make a cookie. And what will happen is this thing will rotate into position and dispense the ingredients onto a balance and then rotate to the next position and dispense uh, this ingredient into the balance and the balance will be able to measure out very very small quantities so this is able to mix a single cookie the benefit of this is that each cookie on the sheet can have a slightly different recipe so that you could uh, you know eat all of them if you want or sample all of them and then figure out how you want to change the recipe in order to make a cookie that you like more if we were to expand this to sort of a, a business idea the factory could make individual cookies and then put like a QR code on the cookie wrapper so then the um, the buyer could scan the QR code and just enter a number of, you know, one to five, how much I like this cookie. And then the factory can uh, update the recipe even day by day or hour by hour if they wanted. Another cool idea is the factory could send different recipes to different regions. So, for example, if all of the cookies sent to the West Coast, uh, you know, people rated the sweeter cookies more highly there then the factory could send sweeter cookies to the West Coast or whatever it turns out to be. So this project is going to involve a lot of interesting um, fluid and powder handling stuff. I'm going to dispense the powdered ingredients by putting a lead screw into the funnel and then driving the lead screw kind of like a drill bit uh, which will cause the powder to be very very slowly metered out down the funnel. For the liquid and semi-liquid ingredients, I'm going to use uh, syringes for the true liquids. Uh, this will be eggs and vanilla extract. And then I'm going to use this device for the butter. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the butter dispenser. So let's take a look at this. I bought this linear actuator assembly off of eBay and modded it quite a bit to hold a metal syringe, uh, which is currently filled with butter and when you activate the uh, linear actuator the plunger is pushed down and butter is dispensed out the bottom. So let me tell you about the process that I used to figure out uh, how to size the motor and uh, figuring out how this all is going to work. I started by loading the syringe up with slightly warm butter. I, I used probably about 70 to 75 degrees F and um, since I took it out of the refrigerator I knew it was going to be way too uh, viscous straight out of the refrigerator so I, I warmed it up a bit and then put that in the syringe and pushed down on a uh, an electronic bathroom scale it's actually a shipping scale to get an idea of how much force it would take to push the butter out the nozzle and it came out to about eight kilograms force the nozzle here is responsible for a lot of the restriction in the butter coming out so if if it turns out that 8 kilograms force is just a little too much for this, I can go to a larger nozzle. Uh, the downside is that a fatter stream of butter doesn't break up as easily, so if you're just pushing out like a really fat stream of butter, it's very hard to meter because the whole chunk comes out kind of in one blast. This fine nozzle actually helps quite a bit because the butter breaks up into droplets. Not really droplets, but sort of chunks, small chunks and those fall down into the mixing vessel uh, to be, be, to be uh, you know, checked on the balance. The next thing I wanted to measure was how, how far this plunger would have to move down in order to dispense uh, a nominal cookies value of butter. So um, to start last weekend I figured out what the values were for a single cookie and it comes out to about 4.7 grams of butter per cookie. So I set up my um, milligram balance and then just dispensed some by hand measuring uh, how much the plunger moved. So I checked it first, dispensed 4.7 grams or as close as I could get to it, and then checked it again. And it turns out that this plunger moves 6 millimeters for each 4.7 gram dose. I also found out that the butter tends to make 200 milligram drops. I mean, they're, they're sort of more like strings that are coming out of this thing. but. At, at that temperature, at about 70 to 75 F, just squeezing on this thing with about 8 kilograms of force will, will cause 200 milligram chunks to come out, which is, which is really good actually. That's, that's fine accuracy for this project. So knowing that I wanted to dispense, uh, or I wanted to move this 6 millimeters, I also um, arbitrarily picked a dispensing time of about 3 seconds. So you figure the, you know, the, the 
carousel rotates into position and then it takes three seconds to actually dispense the butter. So I measured the pitch on this lead screw here and this turns out to be a quarter twenty even though the rest of this lead screw is metric. I guess they, they couldn't find a metric lead screw or something. So with a fifty thousandths of an inch pitch uh, that means I need 4.7 revolutions in three seconds. There's another interesting little feature here. This uh, lead screw is set up with a two to one belt drive reduction. So this is actually the nut and uh, the motor turns this. The lead screw is actually fixed to the frame so the lead screw doesn't rotate but this nut does. So the belt drive gives us uh, a little more torque and a little less speed which actually turned out not to be helpful but I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Originally this lead screw didn't have uh, this motor connected to it and so I had to figure out how much torque my motor was going to need to produce 8 kilograms force here. And so I started browsing around and actually found the uh, Wikipedia article on this subject to be pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. It's, it's really kind of super approximation. I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't trust this, although it's kind of interesting to go through the exercise. Uh, there's a, a formula on the Wikipedia page for torque if you know the force on the lead screw, the diameter of the lead screw, and then there's this friction angle. The friction angle is how much um, mechanical loss there is in the system. So if you're turning the thing, you know, ideally all of that torque would be converted into linear force, but it doesn't work that way because there's friction. So what I did was I, I tried to drive the lead screw backwards, essentially just pushing on the nut and then seeing if the thing would turn just by putting linear force in. If, if that is the case, then that means that these two values are approximately equal because you can overcome the friction just by pushing on it. So I pretended that these were pretty much equal and um, got the value of 13 degrees from this other formula. Anyway, I'm not going to go through this, but it comes out with the belt reduction to be 500 gram centimeters. So when you look through a catalog, they don't rate these in newton meters for some reason. They always use gram centimeters because it's a, a rounder number. And the speed is 190 RPM uh, based on that th three second dispense time. So then after going through all this, you know, just like any good engineering project, you don't actually use these numbers. You just go to the junk bin or the catalog and see what's available to build a prototype. So I had this motor here, which actually turned out to be much too uh, strong. So I tested the torque by just clamping a vice grip onto it and then turning the motor on and it was able to lift the vice grip up 90 degrees. And then I measured the vice grip mass and, and approximate center of mass and figured out that it was uh, much too powerful. To mount the syringe I just um, got a piece of plastic here and then measured the, the diameter inside the syringe handle and machined this piece of plastic to fit. This way I can sort of you know make some small adjustments to the size of this and then just kind of all push it on like that and it actually stays quite quite well connected and I think when it's mounted like like this it's not going to want to fall out of there. Okay, well, I'll keep you posted on the project. Let me know if you have any questions. See you next time. Bye.